I am Laura Brody. Um, I'm the primary curator and the founder for Opulent Mobility. And for description purposes, I am a middle-aged Caucasian woman with brown hair in front of a full bookshelf with some art and some plants. And hi, welcome, Joy. Yes, uh, well, I'm Joy Murray. I'm a Caucasian woman with uh, brownish, reddish, whitish hair, <laughs> age 63. I'm an artist. Uh, uh, living in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, behind me is a couple of my paintings and some light from one of my many windows. What how, what got you involved with Opulent Mobility? I don't remember how you found out about this. Well, it's interesting because um, I was on Facebook for like 14 years mm -hmm. and one stole my account. Oh, no. And I mean, they got my password and my... Um, mm. And my, you know, I couldn't get back in. I couldn't report it as a fake account because they had taken my password and my my email address. So mm -hmm. I quit and I was off for about a year. And my son, um, my adult son travels a lot and he wanted me to get back on so he could show me where he was going and what he was doing. So I did. And uh, of course, I started looking, you know, for old friends and um, and for people involved in uh, disability rights. And I found your thing that way through Facebook. And, and it was like, you know, the day before <laughs> the deadline. And I was like, oh, can, you know, I want to, I want to enter this. This sounds beautiful. You know, it's wonderful. Um, the pieces that you, that you chose are from a series that I'm doing called Look Closer, which is on, uh, disability, sensuality, and beauty. And um, I figured it would fit, be a well fit. And I also was so impressed with your work. Oh, well, thank because, you. Because I, when I started doing artwork, I started um, fabric work. And oh. I would make fabric figures and, and dolls, like wheelchair mermaids and goddesses based on Egyptian mythology. And the whole idea of transformation being an empowering thing. And that when, like when the gods got their heads cut off or whatever, they transformed into something else and yeah. they found a new power that way. So my philosophy of art, of visual art started with that. And then my hands got too weak to do that kind of mm. uh, a sewing and uh, intense handwork. So I started drawing and painting. And, and the same philosophy has kind of bled over, has kept, have said with me. And beautiful paintings. I was going to share one of your pieces. What can you tell us about it? But this was the first piece of the series. And I began to think about, I had started thinking about pain mm -hmm. and um, sex, <laughs> essentially, mm -hmm. you know, and being beast having pain and being immobilized doesn't stop sexual desire in, in many ways. It increases it because it is a great pain reliever to love someone, to love someone physically, especially if you are, are uh, uh, sensory intact. It's just an, an incredible way to, to feel release from, from whatever limits that your body or your illness is putting upon you. Because, but because you're in a wheelchair or you're in a situation where scars show or your body is different, it's very hard to find someone who can look beyond that and, and see the, the gold flowing inside you. And then I decided to, to, to keep moving forward with those ideas and beautiful beautifully done as well and did you find that painting was easier to work with for your hands yes absolutely what kind of materials do you use um i use mostly acrylic paint i also do watercolor and collage in this piece there are little um box cutter knives in it collaged into it where there are certain pain mm. points and uh so I, there's a lot of layering of of color and texture in there and so, text 
Yeah. Um, that's the other thing about my work. I, my, my creative life, I, I started as a writer. Oh, huh. okay. And, uh, I had several short stories published and I wrote a novel and stuff like that, but congratulations. That made me feel very vulnerable in the writing world. And mm. I still write, I still write a blog and I write short things. Um, but painting seems less, uh, it makes me feel less vulnerable and, Interesting. and a sense of immediacy to it. And I can also put the poetry or the idea into it in an artful way. You know, uh, there's a lot of people who think that language and painting should be far, far apart, that the person should, should be able to tell what you mean or make their own meaning out of the painting. And I just don't believe that at all. <laughs> so. Well, I think it's your painting and you get to do what exactly what you want, but it also really adds a nice touch to it. Some of the, from here, I can see just little snippets of the text and some of it's a little hard to, harder to read, but some of it's not at all. So many desires would go unmet. Nerve endings died, but pain, um, some of it I can't hear see as clearly. Are there things from Her here? That, died, but pain continued, I think. It, and one of the things I love about different works is when you when they are layered and when you can see so many different possibilities inside of them and that there's always more to look at. And I think that your pieces really have that. And in, in a piece like this that has lots of little brushstrokes, it's an es escape from pain also you know, just getting lost in the little brushstrokes is very, very, uh, it's just puts me in another zone. You get into that zone. Nice. Oh, it's a, a flow state kind of thing. Right, right. It's, it's always been something I've promoted with people who suffer from chronic pain or who have mm. mental problems or who, you know, who have any kind of different ability that they have to deal with um that that art can put you in that state where you don't feel so alone and so much you're you don't feel the pain as much um do you find that your flow state is different from painting versus writing because i have found that my my process is very different with that and it was a really interesting thing to find out um, it's a, it's a little different, yes, but it, both of them can, I can get in a zone where I you know I forget to eat and it's a <laughs> yep yep my dis disability began when I was sixteen with seizures and uh, it was uh, undiagnosed until mm -hmm. I was in my forties and then I got a wrong diagnosis so I really did not get a a diagnosis until I was 50, but it was a degenerative disease. It's uh, hereditary spastic paraplegia. It's one of the rare diseases. So I went from being ambulatory to using a cane, using a walker, and then now I'm using a wheelchair pretty much full time, although I can full stand and make transfers, but that may not always be true. But it's affected my my lower body uh, more than my upper body, and you know I have weakness in my upper body, but it's still functioning pretty well. Do so, you find the wheelchair makes things easier? Yeah, it makes things easier. Yes, it does. Um, it, and as far as getting around and pain management goes, it makes things harder as far as visiting friends and going places. Uh, so, yeah. Access, I think, as always, is really the key problem. Because these are things that actually help us out. Yeah. We should be able to go places in them. Yeah, you should be able to get there and be able to get into the building. <laughs> that would be that'd be helpful. And turn around and use the bathroom, all those things. All those know. things. Yeah, yeah. So that's an ongoing struggle with all of us i think in every city i think some cities do a lot better than than my city memphis is more has a lot more poverty and a lot mm. more infighting and in oh. politics and things like that so it's hard to get them to concentrate on things like curb cuts and making sure that the ada is enforced 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's a frustrating trouble everywhere. Yeah. But um, yeah. yes, as you say, it's more, some places are much more so than others. And it is much harder when the, the neighbor do, doesn't have a lot of money. Right. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, you know, and then it's, so it's, a, it's this. It's this enveloping thing. First, you get the, the disability, then you can't get places and you can't make good you can't make money so you don't have the money to get to the places it's just it's just a bad it's a bad cycle yeah because and that's part of why i want to do art like this because we're people who deserve to have a full life you know and i don't understand why it's so hard for us to get integrated into society i don't understand why people don't think scars and wrinkles are beautiful things because they are, they're signs of survival. Um, you know, it's a hard world and anybody who makes it through uh, a trauma or even just through life, their face, their bodies are going to change. We're, we just worship this youthful look that doesn't even really exist. It's all Photoshopped and, and created by people from another planet, I think, you know, and none of us really fit that. On that note, I wanted to share the other piece because you can see it a little bit behind your head, but not as clearly as we can now, because this is a beautiful piece. Oh, and I think you. that really shows what you're talking about, about creating that kind of beauty and, and love. Right, right. Well, I, I like Klimt. But um, I think he, he, you know, it's a, he's from a different time and he has a different sense of, of what beauty is. And so I really wanted to, to use his kiss, which is very male dominant and uh, um, put somebody in a wheelchair in there getting her kiss on. <laughs> and where yeah. the, the heads are more, um, even where it's not the one over the other, where they're they're more equal, and, yeah. Uh, and uh, the 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 male figure on his knees by the by the figure in the wheelchair with the little curled feet, yeah, it was really fun to create, and and uh, so there there are, is actually no language in that because it's so much based on the kiss. I think people understand what is yeah. what I'm trying to say here. And I, and, I and would hope so. The color celebrating, but the color tells the story. It so. really does. And it has such a glow, which is also something I really love about Klimt. But this, this feels like it's celebrating the two and not just the background. Whereas a lot of the time with Klimt, the people sort of become the background. and Right. Well, that was the thing. As I continued, I was talking to different people with disabilities. Obviously, my art is not, you know, like portraiture. But I was talking to people about it. And, you know, if they would, you know, let me take some pictures of them for, mm -hmm. my, for my series. And there was a lot of resistance and shame Interesting. and fear oh. how they would be represented and oh. it, kind of, it kind of stopped me like I felt like I was being invasive um oh. I don't know Maybe I just asked the wrong people it but, might just be that because but, you know every, people are people and everybody's got their own reasons for not wanting things but I bet you if you put this out there in more of the disability arts community and started asking. Yeah. I, bet you, I bet you, you could find some people who'd be totally willing to. Well, I have one called the color of air where a person has a permanent tracheal mm -hmm. apparatus. And uh, she had posted a picture of herself with it. She's had it for decades. Mm -hmm. And I did painting based on her and it's kind of a uh, gender ambiguous person in it um and she she really liked it so uh, so she was very encouraging but i have enough insecurities myself 
that that when a few people um, kind of put me off and mm -hmm. uh, I had an agreement to go take pictures of someone who had vitiligo, mm -hmm. the skin disorder where your skin yeah. is different, different colors, mm -hmm. which I think is beautiful. <laughs> and he just got totally, he didn't want to commit to it and he did you know, he wouldn't, you know, we, we kept making appointments for the pictures and he was an older man, probably in his seventies. Mm. And I just think he, and it kind of stopped me. It just stopped me. I wondered if I'm being invasive and projecting myself onto others. And I decided, you know, in the future, as I work, as I continue to work in this se series, I thought, well, maybe I should stop but I kind of have to do it. It's in my head all the time. I'm just doing it slowly. Um, I think it's totally gonna, worth doing. I'm just going to make it up. No, I mean, I, there, there are a lot of people I think who would be very willing. And it's just a question of maybe putting it out there. Because, yeah, sure, some people aren't going to. They're not going right. to want it. They're going to feel uncomfortable. But I'm willing to bet you can. And you can if the people are further away. Um, I know people have been doing photo series from Zoom. So you can totally do it that way as well. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, and it could be really neat. There's a couple more I would like to do just based on other art, you know, famous art. I want to do the promenade uh, okay. with the someone in a wheelchair on the promenade and an able-bodied person flying along behind them, you know, where, you know, the power is the person in the chair. And the, the overwhelming floating love is the person behind them, you know, floating. So, um, but I also just want to do paintings based on what comes out from the relationship I feel with other people and what's going on in my own heart and head. So yeah. here's to more of that. Yeah, I've done someone on mental illness where the, the, I talk about what's going on in their head, through mm -hmm. their hair, you know, or have Ooh. things growing out of their hair and, and things like that, where um, my, my brother had um, paranoid schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. So mental health is also a big, um, we don't we don't want to look at that we don't want to look at people who behave differently or neurologically diver, divergent so i try to i try to paint those into beautiful things too absolutely so. and i think for some people it's a point of terror honestly they, they don't want mm -hmm. to think about it it's as though it would be contagious um and it's that's not how most things work. <laughs> well, I think people are afraid to face their mortality and you're yes. like a walking, talking piece of mortality. Um, but you're also a, a real human being <laughs> in right. the world who's living and showing that this isn't necessarily the end of the world. Right. There are different options for the way people look and feel and are and... Um, Many of them aren't really the things that you see in magazines. Right, right, which is what is so important about this show that you're doing and uh, the perspective of opulence. I, I loved the, the, the woman who painted the cover of the, of the brochure for the show. Rachel. Uh, Rachel, she talked about, you know, how somebody cutting up her food and sharing it with her. And they, she painted this really celebratory painting of, of that and how, what a, a tender and loving act that was. It is. Like, yes, exactly. it is. And, and, it, and both people can feel that instead of it being, oh, I have to do this for you or I have to have this done for me. It can be, uh, if you, if you broaden your, your vision again it can be a very bonding and sensual act yeah 
Absolutely. Yeah.